amazing technology. We are live at 11.05. I just, it just dawned on me. I can talk to the world by just turning your phone on. It's just, this is amazing. I'm BC. Josh, the voice of Spirit Cars behind the phone camera. Poor Mechanism. Go <laughs> yeah. Poor GoPro. They aren't even going to have a world anymore. You can do everything on your phone. But I could go live and show you. You want, you want to be live on mine? <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Okay. So anyway, I'm BC, Spirit Cars, and we build hot rods here, in case you didn't know. Uh, we have, uh, and I appreciate you guys that are a loyal following. We have uh, quite a few people that are actually, uh, believe it or not, look forward to this every day. So yesterday we were talking a little bit about wiring on a 27, and I said we we're going to do uh, steering today, and sure enough, here we are. We're talking about steering. This is the Model A Coupe. Uh, it's mostly spirit stuff, uh, somebody else's chassis, but it's a nice Model A chassis and it's a spirit body. Um, <clears throat> we use Flaming River columns, this one's not particularly a Flaming River, we're a Flaming River dealer, but same thing, uh, it's got a, a cross, cross steer in the front with a half rack. Is that a half rack or just a, oh no, this is kind of a conventional um, steering in the front. So we're just going to kind of come down, the steering needs to be smooth. I mean that's one thing, you don't want your steering to feel like knuckles turning and, and you got to come down at an angle and you got to get to your box and you got to clear um, your headers, you got to clear your motor mounts. Um, so I guess the first, there's two important things, one has got to fit and work smooth. But equally as important, it's got to feel good. If you're going to drive a car, um, I mean, the old days of having the steering wheel between your between your knees on a T-bucket coming straight out of the car, it may have been cool back in the 60s, but um, I like to have a comfortable car. So we got the column drop here. Let's, let's start with getting the column drop in. I'll come on this side. <clears throat> We got the column drop in on the spirit car. Um, there's a metal reinforcing underneath. So we can put the column drop and we can um, bolt to that and use the reinforcement to do things. So we've got a three inch column drop here. For, this is bigger than three inch. This is four and a half, a and a half inch column drop here. And we've got the angle. It's a tilt column. I don't have the handle on it, but you can see this would tilt down. It'll fit nice. Uh, when you're sitting, you can adjust it and, and have a, a good, comfortable uh, fit. And we'll talk about the brake pedal on this, too. Now, we've got this fitted in here. Uh, this got a um, firewall with a wood on it. Uh, it's not always how we do it, but it's it, it'll work fine. We took a piece of PVC tubing, 2-inch ID. You can kind of see it here. And we had to cut a, a big hole in there, not huge, but a pretty big hole to get it through that. What we do, we'll leave that PVC long on this side and long on the other side. Get that column in where we want it. Get it fitting up here. And um, glass this in. Cut the PVC off equal on both sides. And then once you want to remove your column, it'll slide out. And the only hole you'll have, and you can see how tight this fits around there. And you can see the same on the outside. It's not been finished yet, but um, around the column, it's pretty pretty tight. So this will be glassed and once it's painted it'll come out nice and uh, it looks good. Let's talk about the brake real quick. This is kind of a, a unique brake pedal. Um, it's not a spirit one but it's, it works fine. When you do the floor uh, you really want to have a kick panel of some sort uh, at an angle here. It's just a whole lot comfort more comfortable on your foot. So what will happen, now that we've got this pedal working, we had to come through the floor and we, with this big arm here the way it is, we had to have a, a little bigger hole here. So we can kind of clean that up a little bit. But with our kick panel coming at this angle, it's going to cover all that. We'll just notch it here so all you'll see is just a little bit of a notch on the kick panel. And it'll come across this side too to match all that. So when it's carpeted, it'll, it'll go to have a, a good toe plate or I guess I'll call it a toe plate, just angled right in there and built there. This is unique. Uh, Larry supplied this. This is Larry's car, by the way. Um, we've seen this. The master cylinder is, is under the floor here, 
Uh, so when it gets carpeted, uh, there'll be some Velcro on the floor in this area so you can pull the carpet back to access your master cylinder. Uh, normally, what we'll do is is make a fiberglass panel that just screws on there, but this is this is a pretty neat panel. I'm not sure who makes it, but I'm sure it's, um, <laughs> I'm sure it's from the hot rod industry. So these, these are pretty neat. So there's, there's that. Your brake pedal comes around. We had to kind of adjust the rod a little bit to make it work. Um, but you want to make sure not only is your steering wheel comfortable, but that your brake and your uh, gas pedal are comfortable when you sit in the car. Uh, the last thing you want is to have a problem getting from your gas pedal to your brake where your your foot is hooking up under here to try to get over or something like that or you can't, you know, you just have no room for your feet or it's just totally uncomfortable to drive. Um, again, you got two issues. One, it has to be functional. It, it needs to work. If it don't work, it just has to work. You can get by if it's not comfortable, but you'll regret it won't be fun to drive the car. So um, I like to build a car that's as comfortable as can be. It's it's a hot rod. It's going to have a hot rod feel, but you do want it to be um, functional and comfortable. A couple ways to do the rods here. And uh, don't take this uh, number for gospel every... Um, um, we use Flaming River joints, Forkson makes them, there's a couple different companies that make joints. I'm going to say 15 degrees. Uh, that may not be correct, but um, do not go more than 15 degrees. And if you, if you need to, there's a double joint. Um, you don't want all this linkage floppy. On this particular one, we had to have three separate joints. When you have three joints like that, if you can see up under here, what we do is we put a rod end into the frame. So this is flexible, it's a um, three-quarter rod end that the, the D-shaft slips through. I don't know if there's a piece of D-shaft here. I don't see one. You caught me catching 1105 at 1105. I showed up about a 30 seconds before Josh did here. So I'd, if you're not familiar, a D-shaft is round on, on half of it and then it's just cut um, flat on the sides. So it'll go through that. We've got a joint here. We had to make sure we cleared the headers. We don't have a lot of room, but we'd have just enough room. And uh, we put it in originally and it was kind of, angles weren't right, so we lengthened one shaft here and shortened another one and, and kind of changed the angle. So on all of them we got got a decent angle and the, the best thing is when you turn the column turning that string wheel you don't feel it kind of flopping over as the joint goes. So make sure you got an easy turn works both ways. There's several different uh, joints available and they make a joint that's got uh, it's like a double joint. So if you've got an angle that you just have a real tough time getting around and you can't make that 15 degrees, um, there's a double joint. So it's a double right in that one joint and you can get around. Uh, remember, if you got three joints, you're going to have to have that um, support bearing. A support bearing, yeah, that's a good name for it. <laughs> a rod end. It, it just has to have that. Otherwise, it's going to flop around and it won't be, uh, be stable. It just won't work. Other than that, steering is it's not a complicated thing, but it, it can be complicated getting it around things. Uh, in the past, we've had uh, a couple cars, I think we put a Hemi in a, in a Model A one time, and there was just no room. So I actually had to notch the frame, and I put a little uh, pocket in the top of the frame so I could get around. Um, they make several different styles of block hugger headers so there's one where the tubes come to the inside and it gives you a little bit more room so um, even though they, they say they're block hugger there's one that's a little shorter than the other maybe you'll have to do that uh, sometimes now this comes out pretty high uh, so we're clear of uh, the oil but on the on the Chevy the oil filters down here 
and like on a spirit tea, it's it's very close. So you you want to you know make sure you're clearing the different parts of the motor, clearing the the uh, this one here. Let me feel under here. I didn't. Eddie did this one. Oh, we actually went through. Okay. So on this one, this goes through the motor mount. So sometimes you may have to notch the back of the motor mount, but this one has a hole in the back of it here. And uh, Larry might have did this. I'm, I'm not sure if Larry did this or not, but um, it looked pretty good. We got the angles right. We got everything good. Steering column good. Uh, we're looking close to taking this car apart. Um, some of you may have been following this project. This is Larry's car. Uh, we were talking yesterday about how he wants his paint scheme, whether we're going to go on the the line here, two-tone, or where we're going to do that, so uh, what we're going to do maybe with some ghost flames or different things, so we're at the point where we're talking about paint job, where I need to make sure the body's lined up now, i uh, got a pan in the back, I'm just finishing up, um, the hood's already been put on this one, if, if you didn't see that before, I'll just show you again. If you missed the show where we, we did that, I first created uh, this cardboard pattern to fit up in here. Made another cardboard pattern for this shape in the front. Set the hood up on there. And what we've got is, you can see the two holes here. And Larry was wondering how easy it was to reach up under there to get to them holes. You can kind of see the hole is, is right there. If I just reach up and, and I can get my wrench right on it. So when the hood goes on, I've got a screw that goes right here and I'm touching the hole right here. I've got a screw that goes right here. I've got a screw that goes here and on this side, that holds your whole front end together. So we're fitting all this up, making sure the radiator is going to work. But we don't have very much room for the fan. We still have to think about that a little bit more. Um, the car is awful close to coming apart to go, go to paint. Upholstery has already been done and fitted. Uh, we, we need to make sure we fit the, we got a gas tank and we got to kind of cleaned it up. We got to do a little bit of fiberglass on the floor there, but looks like we're pretty ready on this one. And I had, so we got a short one today. Yesterday I made you suffer through 25 minutes. Today we're probably only at 10 minutes or so, huh? I have them. I have them both. They're together again. We found them. So... Usually end with uh, a little quote from Hot Rod Man, Ernie. We have coffee break contemplations and pass it on. So since coffee break contemplations has been missing for a couple weeks, I think we'll just grab one out of here. We, as a group, have a tendency to condemn others for past transgressions. It's much better to celebrate achievements that lead us to unity, love, and the awareness of a greater good. Wow, are we coming together as a country? <laughs> are we still, at least us Hot Ross guys, are, I'm feeling pretty uh, big group hug, group hug around here anyway. We're all having a good time building Hot Ross. I'm day two of not working in the fiberglass shop, so I feel like I'm more of a uh, Hot Rod guy building things. We get Larry's car done here. We got the other Larry. Um, got his steering and all that in today. We're we're going to sort through a lot of his parts today and kind of make a list of what we need and what's going on. Um, Larry sent us a bunch of a bunch of stuff, I guess, so we're going to start his cabinet and go over that. So I'm thinking within the next week or so we may be seeing paint on a couple of these. We've got a turnkey coming together. We've got, we've got a lot of work. We've got a lot of projects, and we've got, I don't know how many you said we've got on, on hold, people bringing cars for paint and that, so... A lot of projects going on. Hopefully these were some helpful hints today. Thanks for being with us, and we will see you tomorrow.